Hey guys, wait till the end of this review for a special surprise. But now here's what I thought about Air Watan Mere Watan. Yeh desh ka radio. Hindustan mein kahi se? Kahi pe Hindustan mein. Air Watan Mere Watan is a bafflingly dull film inspired by a riveting true story. The focus is an underground radio station which played a pivotal role in the 1942 Quit India movement. The force behind the Congress radio was a 22-year-old freedom fighter, Usha Mehta. At that tender age, Usha had already committed her life to her country. In fact, she'd been already doing it for several years. She joined her first protest march when she was only eight years old. The Congress radio helped to galvanize forces across the country and pushed forward Gandhiji's famous dictum, "Karo ya maro." And this is not a spoiler because it's our history. Eventually, Usha and her compatriots were caught. She spent four years in jail, including time in solitary confinement. Decades later, Usha's contribution to the freedom struggle was recognized with the Padma Vibhushan and the Jamnalal Bajaj Award. This was a woman made of Gandhian ideals and steel. And director Kanan Iyer knows a thing or two about fiery women. He started his career as an assistant director on Shekhar Kapoor's Bandit Queen, which is this blistering portrait of a polarizing figure who made her own rules. David Fincher famously said that he was interested in movies that scar. In my personal pantheon of movies that scar, Bandit Queen is number one. I had nightmares for years after watching it. Kanan's feature debut, Ekti Dayan, also had a ferocious first half and several dynamic women. But inexplicably, in Air Watan Mere Watan, Kanan takes the straight and narrow path and delivers a plodding history lesson. The film starts in 1942, just before the Quit India movement. The screenplay by Kanan and Darab Faruqi then goes back to 1930 when Usha was a little girl but already passionate about fighting for freedom. Her father Hari Prasad Mehta was a judge under the British Crown and wholly disapproving of her anti-British sentiments. In one scene, he locks her in a room. Later, she looks out of the barred window at a flock of birds and says, "Main bhi udna chahti hu, Babuji." This metaphor of Usha as a caged bird that longs to soar is repeated later in the film. She's caged not just by her family and circumstances but also by her gender. But the film doesn't delve into this in any meaningful way. The writing and telling is largely listless. Evatan Mere Watan is about a group of friends who choose to dedicate their lives to a higher cause. This requires unimaginable sacrifice. Usha even takes a vow of celibacy. She's consistently torn between her love for her country and her love for her father and eventually she decides to leave home but these monumental decisions leave little impact the narrative doesn't get into how she survived outside the film moves from one scene to another without giving us enough insight or enough time to soak in the consequences of what has just happened it feels rushed and yet labored the characters don't pop either The film rides on the shoulders of Sara Ali Khan who makes a sincere effort but she's hobbled by the writing. The dialogue also written by Darab is so stilted that we rarely get a visceral sense of Usha's struggle, her determination and her relentless courage. Sara's performance is just too manicured. The emotions stay on the surface. In contrast, watch Sparsh Srivastava as Usha's compatriot Fahad. The actor who was superb in the recent Lapata Ladies gives a sketchily written character heft. The best scene in the film is a tussle between Usha and Fahad about who deserves the opportunity to make the ultimate sacrifice and risk imprisonment. Evatan Mere Watan springs to life here, but sadly there aren't too many scenes like this one. The film, especially in the second half, is also a cat and mouse game between the freedom fighters and the British authorities who are desperate to quash the rebel radio. But the screenplay isn't able to build or sustain a sense of tension. It doesn't help that the main bad guy, Inspector John Lyer, is constructed like a relative of the Nazi villain in Raiders of the Lost Ark. In the Mumbai heat, Lyer is wearing a leather coat, knee-high boots and even gloves. He's probably so hot underneath all of that that he can't think straight. The other Brits are equally comical. They just sit around, they're gritting their teeth or they're sipping tea and saying lines like nip it before it becomes big. This material had the potential to be so much more. You can watch Air Watan Mere Watan on Amazon Prime Video. And now, going back to the surprise. We've got a giveaway for you. I'll be giving my most recent book a place in my heart to whoever answers this question correctly. What's the connection between Sara Ali Khan's Air Watan Mere Watan and Ranbir Kapoor's Ye Jawani Hai Diwani? 
I've said something related to the same in the review and let's see if you can find out. Give us your answer in the comments below and we will pick one lucky winner.